here and now, here we are on, with the war on and on, and uh, there's reason to believe that it's going to continue. Uh, Ahmed, what is your current evaluation of this war on the Palestinian people, this genocidal war? Well, it's uh, day 36 of the, the genocide who started. And day 16, I believe, on so-called uh, land invasion, um, the total, the un, uh, unofficial uh, uh, total of murdered Palestinians are closing to 15,000, including those under the rubble, maybe more. We don't know because nobody know, can reach those buildings. Uh, and close to 30,000 Injured, many severely injured. The um, the healthcare is in total collapse. Uh, there's no electricity. There's no uh, fuel for generation generators in the hospitals, especially the hospitals in Gaza proper, where is the onslaught of the Zionist uh, land invasion is occurring as we speak. They're about, uh, they're trying to reach Al Shifa uh, Health Complex. It's a complex, not just a hospital, which provides a lot of, uh, to the Gazans. Uh, they've been attacked as we speak. Um, the resistance is steadfasting uh, and uh, inflicting heavy uh, casualties on the invading uh, Zionist army. In, uh, in many different uh, fronts, uh, northeast, northwest, southwest, and southeast. Uh, southwest was a Shifa hospital, and south southwest was a Shifa hospital, southeast was Al Quds hospital. Al Quds hospital, I heard now, it's been encircled by the Zionists. Uh, they are about to enter it and maybe commit another. Uh, big massacre. There's thousands of civilians living uh, are taking refuge in those two big hospitals. Uh, the estimated numbers in both hospitals about fifty thousand uh, civilians. So we don't know yet uh, what the picture. Um, the Zionists uh, being held at bay by the resistance, who've been fighting uh, these battles. This battle of the two sides, the two hospitals. For the past uh, 15 hours, um, the world is watching. Uh, today, the Arab and Islamic summit did nothing, absolutely just lip service to calling for ceasefire, nothing else. And uh, the massacre is, uh, or the genocide actually, is unfolding before our, our own eyes for the past 36 days, uh, life. That's my take on what's going on. You know, this is a replication of the 1947 Nakba, 1947 to 1949, when the Zionist militias weren't even an army. They were just, you know, terrorist bands, you know, calling themselves, you know, labor Zionist, you know, fancy names, you know, the revisionists, you know, and all this sort of stuff. You know, they carried out massacres of the Palestinians in order to induce a mass exodus of the population. And if they wouldn't have left, then they would have been killed. And they knew it. That's true. None of this nonsense about, you know, returning in two weeks. That was just a BBC Arabic broadcast that was meant to deceive, you know, from the from the British support to the Zionists. Same thing is sure. happening now. And they were very overt about it. You know, they said so themselves. You know, it was <laughs> incredible to see, you know, these, uh, you know, government spokespersons, you know, saying the same things, you know, the historians, you know, have described, you know, as having taken place in the Nakba. Yes. But the sure. opposition is is magnificent. Uh, Steve, now in the United States, there's, you know, huge demonstrations taking place as well, isn't there? Yes, there have been a series of demonstrations across the country in subsequent weeks. Uh, last weekend, uh, upwards of 400,000 people demonstrated in San Francisco and in Washington, D.C. There are other demonstrations the week prior, so there have been many demonstrations However, the U.S. Congress has censured one of the squad for making um, pro-Israeli, pro-Palestinian statements, which they call them anti-Jewish statements. Mm -hmm. So any politician who speaks up 
even around the issue of um, ceasefire is threatened with sanction or retaliation because they're simply re recognizing that there is growing disagreement in the United States behind the United States supported campaign of Israel against the Palestinian resistance and the Palestinian people. But yes, there has been some there have been some very big demonstrations. Yes, there have been. Mm. I want to add one thing. I want to add one thing. I don't know if you heard about it. The Zionist uh, published uh, an advertisement to all uh, people and students and non-students in the United States that they're willing to pay $250 for each who would willing to participate in pro-Israel uh, demonstration in Washington. Do you see on the 14th of this month? Wow. So this is how desperate they are. They're willing to pay anybody 200. It's a bribe. It's just basically a bribe. Mm -hmm. Anybody will willing to join will give them $250 in order to join. <laughs> it's, <laughs> they're pathetic. They're just pathetic. Yeah. Well, I found the uh, public opinion of the Jewish community that we're going into the uh, Holocaust Museum open day, you know, that I was uh, demonstrating in front of last Sunday. About half half was the reaction, you know, some, you know, like very extreme fanatic reactions, you know, saying that I'm, you know, supporting, you know, the killing of 40 beheaded, you know, burnt babies. But, you know, that uh, has been disproven on um, multiple, you know, like sources as being, you know, propaganda. And the uh, Israeli babies that were burned were burned by tank fire or, you know, Apache helicopter, hell like fire that. missiles. And now we have, you know, a new report. Oh, yes. And, you know, the, the other sort of, you know, like a, a lie that came from the Zionist sources was that they hadn't bombed, you know, the hospital that resulted in hundreds, you know, of deaths. And, you know, they just kept on doing, you know, to other hospitals, you know, so their credibility was shot there. And then now we have a third expose here now. I have a screenshot, you know, screen uh, uh, share to show you of it. And uh, I have a conclusion to make to you as well about this. Um, here it is right here. Israeli Apache helicopters killed in own soldiers and civilians on the 7th of October. This is a report, you know, with video footage. You know, like, where does, you know, Hamas have the firepower to do this? You know, this is all the parked cars for all of the uh, Nova festival goers who are all of the age, you know, of soldiers. They're all soldiers, you know, whether on duty or not, whether on reserve or not, you know. But in any case, it uh, becomes evident, you know, that the strategy of Hamas was not to go in and kill as many, you know, like Jews as possible. No, it was to take as many Israeli military and settler hostages as possible. Hostages in order to exchange, you know, for the release of the 5,000, you know, Palestinian hostages that are called prisoners in the Israel prison system. And now sure. an additional 1,000 from the West Bank as well. So, you know, here, here it is, you know, like I'll put, I'll stop this so, you know, people can take a screenshot of this, you know, from the video. This is documentary evidence here. And it shows that the, the new drone footage, you know, and there's a link there as well, shows an aerial view of hundreds of burned and destroyed cars taken from the site of the festival. Uh, and uh, claimed that they removed 260 bodies from the festival site. Israel claims that they were massacred by Hamas fighters and civilian Palestinian looters who fled across the open gas offense in the hours after the Hamas attack. However, the footage appears to confirm previous reports in Israeli media that Israeli pilots flying Apache helicopters responded to the attacks by opening fire on both Hamas fighters and Israelis. Yeah, this is called the Hannibal Directive, in which, you know, in order to defeat, the, you know, the enemy, they will destroy, you know, any hostages that they have, you know. Exactly. Exactly. In exactly. particular, if they're if they're soldiers, you know, because, you know, they don't want to be put into a position where they're forced by public opinion in Israel to exchange a thousand Palestinian prisoners like they did, you know, in exchange for the uh, one, you know, Israeli soldier that was released, you know, by Hamas previously. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, here, well, here's, here's is... all the information right here. Let me put the, here's a stop here. So this can be screen captured. And then the next section here, from here down. Can, can you put away, this um, is doctor. This is you know like something that can disappear. <laughs> you know. Can you put a link in, in in the chat for our viewers? 
good idea. Yeah. You know, you know, it's a it's a fact that the Zionists like lie like they breathe. Actually, okay. they lie more than they breathe. Yeah. Ever yeah. since, ever since the big lie, land without people for people with the, without land until now, we're not quote unquote we're not targeting hospitals or or civilians. It's all a house of lies. That's what they live on. That's what they 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 disseminate disseminate to the world for, mm -hmm. and this is who they are. Just a house of lies based on genocide and terrorism. Yeah. Again, looking at those homes in the uh, Zionist colonies around Gaza who were burned, being destroyed. I mean, you could tell this is a big shell that hit those homes. The Hamas fighters who entered the Gaza uh, envelope area, or to, they, as they call it, they were armed with light uh, uh, light uh, arms. They were not. Uh, they didn't come with tanks nor Apache helicopters to kill and murder hundreds of people at at one point. So, um, you know, I hope people understand and can see through the Zionist uh, lies. Mm. The towns that were captured, you know, by the Hamas fighters, they were the towns from which the Palestinians were expelled in 1947. Because that territory was initially allocated by the Partition Plan of the United Nations, Resolutions 181, giving that territory and recognizing that territory as being part of Gaza, part of Palestine. Uh, actually, actually, let me let me let me just add one more fact that most people they don't know. In 1950s, at, at by 1955, the Gaza Strip was 750 square kilometers. When Israel invaded with the the french and the british uh, egypt okay uh, they took of course gaza uh, the zionists they took over gaza and when we drew when they withdrew they kept the 750 square kilometers minus the 365 365 square kilometers so basically these lands okay being occupied there after the proclamation of the state of Israel. So there were lots of villages. All the so-called uh, Gaza envelope colonies lies and is, uh, lies in these areas. Yeah. I mean, the Gaza fighters were probably the grandchildren of the very refugees Absolutely. that were made at that time. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're just returning to their own hometowns, yeah. basically. Whereas being squatters from all over the world, okay, uh, uh, living on their land. Yeah, squatters is the word for sure. That's yeah. what they are. That's yeah. what they are. They're squatter colonists. Yeah, and then they get the subsidies, you know, up to 70,000 shekels a year, you know, they get subsidies, a whole bunch of uh, different uh, subsidies as well. It's it incredible. Is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. Bring, us, bring us back to the subsidies that the... The Canadian and U.S. Uh, governments uh, uh, furnished to the white colonists moving westward in uh, in the past two hundred years. You know, even the Zionist charities in Canada, you know, collect money, you know, without paying tax, so that you oh, know, like the Zionists, you know, donate, you know, to their own even military projects, you know, and they get a tax deduction for it, fifty <laughs> percent or something. It's, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's our, our charity that was collecting, you know, money for the peace movement in Israel, we got, you know, uh, deregistered, you know, by the Federal Court of Appeal. Absolutely, absolutely uh, disgusting. Yeah, really disgusting. There's two things that I have to uh, bring up, you know, that they're very distressing that concern me a great deal concerning Gaza. And that is that I think these are two reasons. These are politically economic reasons that dictate that this, uh, you know, uh, this, you know, genocide is going to continue on for a long time with the goal of seeking to exp expel the Palestinians there. And if they do not get expelled, then they are going to be, you know, decimated because this territory is of incredible strategic importance for two reasons. One, 
they intend to build a Ben-Gurion canal down to the Red Sea from Gaza to connect the Mediterranean to the Red Sea to India and to, and to the uh, oil fields, you know, of the Orient, okay? And, you know, they even theorized, you know, of making this canal using, you know, nuclear bombs. So they could do, you know, like a two-in-one stroke, you know, like get rid of some Palestinians and, you know, start to dig a trench, you know, down to the Red Sea at the same time from Gaza. This is how crazy, you know, they, 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 their planning goes, you know, to such extents. And, you know, they are. Israeli spokesperson, you know, was even talking about, you know, the carpet bombing as being, you know, a, a legitimate, you know, measure because that's what the um, Allies did to Germany in the Second World War. And then she makes reference, you know, to the nuclear bombs as well, as if, you know, that's included in permissible military tactics. Okay. That's one concern. The, well, um, the Ben Gurion uh, Canal, which uh, runs from the the port of Umur Rashash, which they call it Elat, alongside all alongside the Egyptian borders to with Palestine, all the way to the Mediterranean Sea, where is Gaza Strip, is right uh, lies. So basically, they want to ethnic cleanse the uh, the Gaza Strip, get rid of the Palestinians, create that uh, canal. There's one more thing which is yeah. very important. The offshore of Gaza, there's a huge, uh, you know, gas fields under the waters of the Mediterranean. That's so this, like they're doing the two birds in one stone. Yeah. The stone is the genocide of the Holocaust of the Palestinian people, mm. ethnic cleansing them mm. under the guise of defeating uh, uh, Hamas or defending itself. Mm -hmm. and create this canal and uh, take over the this wealth of uh, gas underneath uh, the Mediterranean, yeah. where you could see why the West, especially Europe, the major uh, European states like Italy, Germany, France, and uh, Britain are uh, eager to get their hands on this uh, gas fields. We, Egypt you know, also. Egypt also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So versus their gas, uh, they don't want, don't want from Russia. Mm. So this is, this is a huge event. You could see why this is one aspect of why the, the West mm. are, are complicit in this genocide. Mm -hmm. And to sell it to the Israeli public, you know, they created all of these, you know, uh, delusions about um, the Hamas being Nazis. They even try to use the term, you know, to describe Hamas has accurately referred to the um, Zionist administration as uh, Nazis. They are. Yeah, they are doing. Actually, yesterday I was talking with a friend of mine. Actually, the 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 Zionists surpa surpassed the Nazis in their uh, deeds and their words. The Nazis looked at the Jews and other uh, Slavic nations as inferior pe beings to the Aryan people. But they still look at them as people. Mm. Whereas the Zionists, they looked at the Palestinians as animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they are, they actually, they're, they have really surpassed mm. their evilness. Yeah. to the Nazis in their narratives. I'm yeah. not saying about their deeds, yeah. but their narratives, which is there, actually the deed is is despicable mm. as the Nazis. Yes, Netanyahu, King Bibi, he even refers to Palestinians as Amalek. Amalek, you know, was uh, a group that uh, attacked uh, a couple of uh, nomadic uh, Hebrews uh, with Moses and uh, in revenge, you know, they went to massacre the entire nation or something like this. According, to, according to the Ezra, the editor, you know, like a, a story which doesn't ex exist in the Samaritan Torah. It's, you know, like some story that was made up. And it's, you know, made up to justify uh, genocide. You know, there's this, you know, tendency, you know, genocidal tendency inserted into the Jewish religious texts. That hadn't existed there previously. Even Jericho was, you know, in effect, you know, an Egyptian massacre and not 
you know, not a Hebrew massacre, you know, but it was written up, you know, as a Hebrew massacre in order to create an aura of power, in order to create, you know, some sort of a kingdom. You know, even though in the Torah it mentions as well that King David was not allowed to build a temple because he had blood on his hands. You know, at the same time, you know, the Torah has this, you know, throws both, you know, uh, versions, you know, of Judaism into the same sort of sack. This is Ezra, the editor. It's, you know, like been corrupted, you know, you, you know, you have to look to, you know, like Natura Carta to find out what real Judaism is. That's true. That's true. I've been in touch with a couple of brothers from Natura Carta. And uh, I understand that what is true Judaism comparing to what is Nazism or Zionism. Yeah. I'm sorry, I use Nazism, but it's the same thing. Hmm. So I, I always differentiate between Judaism, Jews versus uh, Zionism or Zionist mm -hmm. who, who wants to use uh, their fascist ideology as Jude, Jewish, which is totally in, in contradiction to it, for yeah. sure. Yes. No. I, I made a sign, you know, that I'm going to take to the demonstration at the Jewish uh, Community Center tomorrow uh, saying, you know, one Holocaust does not justify another. Absolutely, you're absolutely. I'm correct. gonna, you know, like put that right in their face. Uh, yes, yes, very true, very true. Uh, do you, have you heard the news from London today? No, there's one million protesters in the in the uh, streets of of London. Wow, unreal, one million. Wow. Sonak and his interior minister tried to uh, stop them, uh. but the police said to them no we're not gonna stop them we're gonna allow them yeah oh. you cannot do that this is not israel it's the same thing happened to me you know at first the police arrested me put me in prison for four days and now there were last demonstration you know last sunday there were six of them standing there protecting me <laughs> no I, I you know what i i have to admit uh, uh beside the political echelon we have in the city sadly uh in the cities actually in canada uh, across uh, the provinces and the federal the police basically they're upholding the law which is uh, in the side of us we canadians we have the right to express our views mm -hmm. in demonstrations or rallies or by saying what we think it's right Mm -hmm. Nobody can take that, that right from us. Ottawa is going to Parliament Hill tomorrow for a big demonstration. Yes, yes. tomorrow at 2 o'clock we are rally. We have a rally and a march mm -hmm. uh, from the Parliament Hill down to the market to the, uh, to the, to the murderous U.S. embassy. Uh, so you're focusing on the U.S. embassy. Yeah, that's where the control is, yeah. Yeah, this is this is will get away with all of this, you know. Like this is a war. This is, war. This, is a, this this is what I call this is a NATO war or NATO mm. war mm. against the Palestinian people, in by the hands of Zionists. Mm. So they you have the squatters fighting the war of the United States. It's, this is a, said, in, becoming an international war, and then there's an international opposition, which is like you know. Uh, Intifada worldwide revolution is what was at our demonstration absolutely. here. Yeah. People are fed up. People yeah. are absolutely fed up what's going on in Palestine. Yeah. I Any see machine you, that doesn't stop a genocide, you know, has discredited itself and will disappear. It's finished. We I need don't to disappear. Think, yeah. I do believe, I do believe that the events of October 7th with the seeds uh, for the end of the Zionist uh, entity in, in, in the middle of the Arab world. Yes. So, so more, the massacres they are committing against the Palestinians will not go, will not, we will not forget. Mm. Let's put it this way. But this Thank is God. just the beginning. You know, this is going to uh, continue and it's going to expand now as well. Even inside of Israel, you know, the fascists are talking about, you know, like attacking the Democrats and the, uh, uh, and the uh, 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 anti Zionists, they call them. Yeah. They threatened to kill them. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I would not be surprised if I seeing seeing the Zionists aiming at each other, killing uh -huh. at each other. There's a big, big problems inside the Zionist entity. A uh, vast uh, majority of uh, squatters in northern Palestine, 
they left. They are in the central. 125,000, yeah. Yeah, the ones uh, in the south near Gaza, they left. They are in the center. Hmm. They're fighting among each other. There's people are going out uh, demonstration. Please bring our uh, prisoners back home while others call them traitors. So this is, it doesn't take much before somebody pulls the trigger. Yeah. And I could see that. They're not even willing to exchange, you know, like uh, Palestinian prisoners for the hostages, for the political, for the prisoners of war and for the, uh, and the hostages. So, but you the, know how many, uh, a how third many, of them are, are soldiers, aren't they? Sorry? A third of the so-called hostages are actually soldiers and are prisoners of actually, war. Actually, there's about, uh, the number varies between 100 to 150 soldiers and uh, officers. The rest who are uh, dual citizen squatters, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, uh, the resistance has been, have been saying for the past week or so, are we are willing to let go of these people providing the, the conditions right to let them go, which is we need ceasefire for at least five days. So you could also re release our women and children that's held by the Zionist jails. Yeah. So the Zionists are stalling and they're refusing. Yeah. They're calling this is this is a public relation by Hamas. Why it's public relation? They're mm -hmm. trying to release the women and children who've been taken by by not Hamas soldiers, but by uh, regular citizens who went also with the with the with the Hamas fighters when they broke the ghetto walls. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, they said we are willing to let them go. Mm -hmm. Why don't you want to stop? To we cannot we cannot release these people yeah. where you are bombing. How yeah. can I release? It's for the safety of your own. Prisoners. Yeah, no. But no they're Israel, not... yeah, uh, Israel is demanding surrender from Hamas, and they're, not... and they're expected to be believed. You know, when they're saying that they're going to enter into a ceasefire after the hostages are released, it's I don't think they believe them. You know, it's not going to happen. No, uh, Hamas, uh, Al Jihad, PFLP, DFLP, uh, Al Nasser brigades. And all other resistant groups, they're not gonna, you know, uh, hoist the white flag to the Zionists. Mm. They gotta die. They gotta live, and fight or die. Mm. There will be no surrender. And the Zionists, I believe, will be defeated. Mm. That when the people are united, they will never be defeated. Uh, the West in Bank that. is coming into play. The West Bank is in revolt as well now. Oh, yes. Yes. Yesterday, they were, yesterday, we were 17 martyrs. The day before, 20 martyrs. Mm. Total martyrs being murdered by the Zionist uh, gang, gang army. Since the beginning of uh, Al-Aqsa uh, operation, or uh, to, we call it Tufan Al-Aqsa, or the Al-Aqsa flood, 180 Palestinians been murdered by the Zionists, about a third of them children, over a thousand injured, many mm. are in critical condition, and they're not Hamas. Mm. They're just uh, innocent people going by their own life, when on the, doing their own life, mm. while the Zionist squatter colonists and the army attacking them. Mm. in their olive groves or on the roads or even mm. in their own homes. Yes. This is the incursions, you know, into Sector A, which they promised to stay out of. They're not supposed or, to be <laughs> supposed yes, to so, the authority of the Palestinian yeah, well, Authority. Just, and the Palestinian Authority lets them come in as well. You know, they just make, uh, you know, a schedule. <laughs> uh, that's, that's another story unfolding. The yeah. PA is something of the past after October 7th. Mm. It's gone. No more PA, I mean, I believe. Oh, but they've offered to take over control of the Gaza Strip. Abbas said it's yeah, it just wishful uh, thinking and dream by the U.S. They, mm -hmm. They're trying to, it's uh, like a, 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 you know, like gimmick, a playing games that uh, they're sure that Amer the Israelis will take care of Gaza and defeat Hamas, and we're talking about the day after. No, there'll be no day after for you. Mm -hmm. So, the U.S. is sort of crucial in all this, but there's no hope, you know, in the U.S., you know, for a ceasefire. You know, even, you know, one of the members of the squad, you know, who spoke out, 
you know, was censured, you know, by the Congress or the Senate or something by Congress. Yeah. And, you know, like, the, you know, like the last 12, you know, perhaps who vote for, you know, ceasefire, everybody else wants war. Yes. This this is their project. The, the Zionist entity is the Western imperialist project. It, yeah. It's a bridgehead of the Western imperialists in the middle of the Arab world. Yeah. This is how they envision it. Yeah. This is another, as I said before, this is another crusade mm. kingdom. Yeah. This time they are using the Jews mm. or yeah, mercenaries. You know, yeah. This is the first one. They get rid of the Jewish question in Europe. Yes. This is a final solution where if Hitler killed, now they want to, they did, they did, they continue the job for of Hitler by sending the Jews to Palestine to do their dirty job. Mm. And the Jews, sadly, who are the Zionists, I'm not so when I call them Jews, the Zionists, they were gladly to do the dirty job of the West, yeah. of being uh, the, the biggest arm, army, arm garrison mm. in the Middle East. Yeah, with a collective consciousness that can be described as a, a, a collective psychosis. It's a, it's a, a psychotic uh, trauma which it's translated itself, projected itself on top of the uh, Hamas as if, you know, Palestinians, you know, were the Nazis, you know, like they're jumped from one historical epoch into another, you know, and pretending that they're fighting, you know, the Second World War, when in fact the Zionists ran away and didn't even fight against the Nazis in the first place. And they even, were collaborating know, like, with them. They were yeah, collaborating they were, with them. Making deals with them as well. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The Zionists, they were just running away from fighting the Nazis. Actually, just, actually, there were reports well, not reports, it's a fact that the, the ghetto, the Warsaw ghetto guards, many of them were Zionists. Oh, 67.1% of the ghetto police were Zionists. Yes. You know, the study was yes. done. Yes, yes, yes. I wish that some Zionists listen to this and go look through the history books and yeah. could see their, their uh, heroic forefathers in Zionism. They were nothing but Nazi collaborators killing Jews. Yeah, in Warsaw. Okay, we've got a minute to conclude here. Yes. So, what's what? What can we do? Like, you know, like next week, you know, next day, you know, like what's to be done, type thing. I think we have to continue doing what we do. Steve. Right. Yeah. You know, go ahead. Let's Steve. I didn't hear from Steve. <laughs> oh, you're muted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You're still so, muted. You're still yeah. muted, Steve. Okay, so uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go we, back to the uh, Jewish Community Center. Do you know? But last week I was all myself. You know, like I was just one. Another, you know, uh, uh, ACJC Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians member came as well, but uh, he came too late. You know, and missed me. You know, but they're all old members. You know, like and nobody's. You know, like uh, can be an activist uh, like me. You know, <laughs> seventy-five. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. Steve is here. Okay, so so. Well, what uh, what should we do? We have to keep doing what what we're doing: educate, agitate, organize. Mm. Everything that's going on now, we have to continue because those are the weapons that 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 we have, and we seem to be doing them the best we can. Mm. And demand, demand, demands, demand, demand justice, demand an end to the an end to the occupation, demand an end and into the bombing. Um, you know, there's so many more things we can demand, but we have to keep doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We have to keep, just keep, keep, keep on walking this walk. That's it. So you know, like about sixty percent of the American public are now, uh, you know, for a ceasefire, uh, from what I understand. So you know, there's, there's, uh, but you know, like it's the Democrats and Republicans both, you know, are so crazy Zionist. This is, yes. you know, like, uh, yes, they are. This is, you know, like uh, too much to take, but you know, too much to tolerate. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know the 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 Congress. I don't have any faith in the Congress or the White House or the the imperialist establishment, either in the United States, Canada, to that the Western Europe. Yeah. I have faith in the people, the grassroots movement, to put pressure on those in order to move. Otherwise, yeah. uh, they're not gonna move by themselves. Yeah. Yeah, leave them with no choice. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely.
Very good. Okay, that's a good note to end on. Thank you very much. All right.